Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you with It's Good to Be the King. Uh, this is the Jerry Lawler story. This is a uh, documentary that's heavily uh, been rumored uh, to be coming out from uh, the WWE since uh, about WrestleMania 27 time. Of course, 2011 was a big year for Jerry Lawler wrestling inside of the, uh, the WWE. Um, he you know, got his first WrestleMania match. He was uh, a part of the Elimination Chamber headlining uh, for the WWE Championship against The Miz. He had a TLC match match on Monday Night Raw, and um, I'm sure if you go back in time and you watch some old Stevie Breach videos, I was really negative about Jerry Lawler wrestling and um, you know being a part of the main event uh, of a pay-per-view, especially having a, a match with more than likely the most time of any other match at, at WrestleMania 27. Um, in a very bad match um, of Lawler going up against Cole, and basically the whole WrestleMania being built around the feud of two announcers at the time the Lawler versus Cole storyline which you know revolved into every match that was happening on Monday Night Raw with those two guys not getting along it made it seem like Michael Cole was one of the biggest heels in the company and uh, it was a lot like you know when you would watch TNA and Dixie Carter and Hulk Hogan were involved in every storyline that was involved in the show it was just too much you want to have them fight have them fight but don't have it roll over into every other feud that's going on in the show but um, something changed uh, a little bit longer, uh, a little bit later. Uh, maybe really want to see um, a, a Jerry Lawler DVD come out. And that was me picking up Memphis Heat. A uh, really good DVD. I have a review up on my channel. Um, you just type in Memphis Heat Stevie Breach. I'm sure it'll pop up. This is the true story of Memphis wrestling. Um, you know, lots of cameos in this documentary from Jerry Lawler, Jimmy Hart, Jackie Fargo. Um, the Rock's dad, Rocky Johnson, uh, superstar Bill Dundee, Jimmy Valiant, uh, Jerry Jarrett, who is Jeff Jarrett's dad, uh, and Sputnik Monroe, some of the biggest stars um, from Memphis. This really made me, you know, really want to see more about Memphis wrestling, and uh, I really like this DVD, and it made me want um, WWE to come out with a, um, I, I guess you can say their own documentary on Memphis, but the, it's a hard thing because nobody really knows who owns um, Memphis Wrestling's tape library. Jerry Jarrett says he owns it. Um, Jerry Lawler says he owns it. And there's other owners and there's other people that have been investors along the way that think that they own it. So, um, you know, I'm glad that we got this. This was a very, very good documentary, a very, very good set of matches to show the history of Jerry Lawler. Um, I'm hoping that someday we can get some more on Memphis, you know, how, you know, they, we have a, a DVD about the Von Erics, um down in Texas. We've got the, the USWA uh, run out of Minnesota, WCW, ECW. Um, a lot of the big territories uh, have all got their own DVD sets that I'm hoping, you know, with Mid-South uh, that we can get one on Memphis. But uh, the discs look really nice. There he is coming out for his WrestleMania match at WrestleMania 27. Here he is on the King's Court. In the early 90s of Monday Night Raw. Lots of stuff on this documentary. Um, there he is growing up. Uh, high school. Not a big fan of those sections of the documentaries ever. Just just get me into them getting getting into wrestling. Uh, growing up. Um, a Memphis wrestling fan. His father passing away. Um, Jerry's teacher. Uh, Jerry starting wrestling. Which is a very fun, very good story. About him being a radio DJ. I guess it goes back longer than that. I guess it, it really, really got into business because he was drawing cartoons and he sent he sent them in uh, to the television station and uh, Lance Russell, the historic uh, Memphis wrestling uh, announcer, used to show uh, Jerry Lawler's cartoons on TV when he would t tell his recap of what happened in case you missed last week's edition of the show. He would show the cartoons and the cartoons would sort of be like a. Uh, uh, a picture uh, of what you would have saw if you tuned in. Um, and then, of course, also uh, Jerry Lawler would um, become a, a radio DJ and uh, he would get into the wrestling business and he was actually going to wrestle for the rival promotion. And they were going to put him in the main event uh, because he'd be able to do a lot of promotion for them on the radio. And uh, then basically, you know, USWA you know, snatched him up and said, don't wrestle for them, wrestle for us. We'll teach you how to wrestle and we'll make you a star, but you got to start at the bottom. And Jerry took them up on their offer. Um, from there, we go to uh, building a star, a new beginning for Memphis wrestling, a big thing on Andy Kaufman, who was a big star from the TV show Taxi, 
And um, Andy Kaufman actually went to Vince McMahon, being a Big Ten wrestling fan, and said, hey, I want to come in. I want to wrestle with you guys. I think I can help out. And Vince uh, politely told him no. And word got passed down to Jerry Lawler. And he got brought into Memphis. And it was a big star for them and brought them a lot of mainstream promotion uh, to Andy coming in. And it was a real boost uh, to the Memphis territory. Um, Memphis wrestling in the 1980s. Jerry Jarrett's, uh, I'm sorry, Jerry's start in the WWE, which is a really good story. Um, a story that I really didn't know um, about until really recently. Uh, of course, everybody knows about Vince McMahon getting in trouble with the uh, American government uh, with steroids and being put on trial if he was trying to distribute them to his wrestlers. If he would have uh, been found guilty, he would have basically... He would have basically been sent to jail and lost control of his company. Uh, Linda wasn't going to be able to run it. And, you know, she's a good uh, business person, but doesn't know a lot about the wrestling business. Uh, Shane and um, Stephanie, way too young at the time. I'm sure they were in high school or maybe even younger at the time. So they weren't even in the picture. Um, you know, Jerry Jarrett was brought in from the uh, USWA because it was the the last, you know, freestanding promotion. Uh, Jerry had a, a, a great, um, you know, deal of respect inside of wrestling so he was brought in that basically in a case of emergency you're going to run the WWF and that was sort of an open door they brought in uh, Jerry Lawler and um, he started uh, becoming the announcer uh, for um, Monday Night Raw as a fill-in for the Macho Man. But actually before that, uh, Jerry Lawler was actually there, you know, being a wrestler. And I remember him having a long string of feuds with Bret Hart. For some reason, this wasn't talked about on the documentary at all. Um, of course, Bret, Bret Hart once the first, won the first uh, pay-per-view King of the Ring, and Jerry Lawler attacked him uh, once it was over. And uh, that started a feud for them that would, you know, they'd have a match at SummerSlam, they would have a match... Um, I, I believe that feud would go for at least a year, uh, taking up a big part of um, um, Bret Hart. You know, he had, he wouldn't have a championship at the time, so he wouldn't be involved in the main event. So we need some sort of a uh, a feud to be going on. But the, the one match that I remember the most is it was supposed to be a Jerry Lawler versus Bret Hart match, and Jerry Lawler came out on crutches and said that he was injured. Uh, Doink the the clown filled in, and uh, Bret beat Doink, and then Jerry attacked him, and then basically they said that Jerry had to wrestle the match because he wasn't injured. Um, but lots of stuff. He ran for the mayor of Memphis, um, leaving and returning the WWE, which is a great story uh, about basically, you know, he had brought his girlfriend, or it might have been his wife at the time, the cat, and uh, Vince had decided that her time in the company was done, and, and they were going to release her, and um, Jerry stood up for his woman and basically said, if you fire her, you're going to have to fire me too, and uh, Vince thanked him, and they walked out the door, and uh, then once the invasion uh, was over. They didn't need to use Paul Heyman on TV anymore, so they on screen fired Paul Heyman and brought Jerry Lawler back uh, to be reunited with uh, JR. Um, the Hall of Fame uh, being inducted, Jerry talks about how he didn't want to go in because he didn't think his wrestling uh, career was done. Um, from there, we go to his WWE title match against The Miz, WrestleMania 27 against Michael Cole, and then talking about his heart attack on Monday Night Raw. Um, from here, we'll go to a lot of matches from Memphis Wrestling, uh, Jerry Lawler versus Terry Funk. Uh, Jerry Lawler versus Andy Kaufman, Jerry Lawler versus Superstar Bill Dundee, uh, versus Eddie Gilbert, uh, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, um, Jerry Lawler, I can't read it because that stupid thing, versus Kerry Von Erich, it's a really good match. If it's the match that I believe it is, Kerry Von Erich in the back um, accidentally scratched himself on his bicep because he had an itch, but he scratched himself on the finger that he hit his blade on, and uh, Kerry Von Erich walks out to the ring already covered in blood, um, if it's the one that I can believe it is. Um, here he is for his WWE debut in 1992 uh, versus Jim Powers, uh, the King's Court with Giant Gonzalez. Uh, Jerry Lawler interrupts uh, Bret the Hitman Hart's coronation. That would, of course, be 1993. So I guess I was a little bit wrong talking about him coming in and he'd already been a part of her. Uh, all right. Uh, that's the way that I remember it in my mind, at least. Uh, Tiny Tim uh, versus Owen Hart versus Bam Bam Bigelow uh, versus Roddy Piper versus Roddy Piper. I, I, I remember that feud, but I don't really remember that feud, if that makes any sense that I'm saying to you right there. Um, but uh, then we go first, The Undertaker, King's Court with William Shatner, um, Kiss My Foot Training, uh, Jerry Lawler versus Bret Hart, Jerry Lawler versus, what does it say, Al Jackson? 
the Superstars match. That's a little bit weird to put on there. Um, <laughs> then we go uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, uh, The Great Debates, Jerry Lawler and Rob Van Dam versus The Headbangers, uh, Tommy Dreamer from ECW. Well, they should have talked about that in the documentary, too. That would have been great, him, him doing his whole run with ECW, sort of being the WWE's flagman at the time. Um, Hall of Fame, Jerry Lawler versus The Miz, TLC, Jerry Lawler versus Michael Cole. Uh, Blu-ray exclusives uh, there for you, talking a little bit about Jimmy Hart. Uh, and then we have um, Jerry Lawler versus uh, Ric Flair, uh, Jerry Lawler versus Andy Kaufman, uh, Jerry interviewing himself, um, Jerry Lawler versus Sean O'Hare, and After Raw birthday celebration from 2010. Uh, flip this over and then see what they have it headline down here. It's good to be King, the Jerry Lawler story, two to set. Jerry the King Lawler, WWE, the Kings, Andy Kaufman, WWE, and the King. A few pictures uh, from him and his. Uh, past. But there you go. Jerry Lawler's story. Highly recommend it. Thought it was a really, really good release.